Hello friends! Thank you for stopping by here at Adventures in Food with Howard. If you've been here before, then thanks for stopping by. If this is your first time here, then welcome. Cowboy cookies are a sweet treat that I've been familiar with for a long time now, but this is my first time actually making them. How do I describe these cookies? I guess you could say that if a chocolate chip cookie and a pecan pie had a baby, it would be a cowboy cookie. The ingredient list may seem long, but if you do a lot of baking, you probably already have most of these ingredients in your pantry or refrigerator. So come along with me and let me show you how easy it is to put together a batch of cowboy cookies. To make about two dozen cookies, you'll need one cup of all-purpose flour, one half cup brown sugar firmly packed, one half cup granulated white sugar, one cup of old-fashioned rolled oats, one half cup of chocolate chips, one half cup toasted chopped pecans, one half cup sweetened flaked coconut, one half cup butter, one extra large egg, one teaspoon of baking powder, one half teaspoon baking soda, one quarter teaspoon salt, and one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. The first thing you want to do is measure out all of your drying ingredients, including your flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt into a large mixing bowl. Using a wire whisk, blend these dry ingredients well so that everything is mixed thoroughly. Next, we want to get all of our wet ingredients together. Place your butter in a microwave safe dish and microwave on half power just until it's melted. This shouldn't take more than 30 seconds to one minute depending upon the strength of your microwave oven. Combine the melted butter with your white and brown sugar and whisk or stir until combined and thoroughly mixed together. Crack the egg and add it to the butter-sugar mixture and stir it well so that it's thoroughly combined and it's a uniform color. Then add your vanilla extract to this mixture and stir for several more minutes until the mixture is smooth and glossy. Add the sugar butter mixture to the dry ingredients, making sure to scrape out every drop of this liquid gold. Using a spoon, mix the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients, but don't overmix. Just mix until all the flour has been moistened and then stop. You don't want to develop the gluten in the flour. Add the rolled oats all at once and stir only enough to combine. Don't overmix. Finally, add the chocolate chips, pecans, and coconut all at once and combine just until it's been thoroughly mixed. Using either a cookie scoop or two spoons, form your cookies into about one ounce balls. Place the balls of cookie dough onto a sheet pan. It's helpful but not necessary for the sheet pan to be lined with parchment paper or a silicone baking mat. Keep the cookies about an inch and a half to two inches apart because they will spread in the oven as they bake. Place the cookies into a 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven and bake for about six minutes. You'll want to rotate the sheet pan 180 degrees in the oven so the cookies will brown evenly. 
then bake for another six to 10 minutes. Keep in mind that the shorter the bake time, the softer your, your cookie will be. And the longer your bake time, the crispier your cookie will be. So if you want a softer, chewy cookie, bake for around 10 to 12 minutes. If you want a harder, crispier cookie, then bake them for around 14 to 16 minutes. I could tell just by looking at these cookies that they needed about another 90 seconds in the oven. So I put them back until they looked good to me. But watch your cookies closely because all ovens bake differently. So always check them at the minimum baking time. You can always put them back in the oven for one or two minutes more of baking, but there is no way to fix a cookie that has been overbaked. Once your cookies are baked how you like them, remove them from the oven, but allow the cookies to stay on the cookie sheet for five minutes. This five minute period is called carryover cooking. This also allows for the cookies to firm up because if you try to remove them as soon as you take them out of the oven, the cookie will fall apart on you. After the five minutes have passed, you can safely use a spatula to remove the cookies from the sheet pan and place them on a wire cooling rack. A cooling rack is necessary because if you let them cool on a solid surface, the cookies will start to steam on the bottom and they won't be as chewy and pleasant to eat. Try to resist the temptation to eat these cookies when they're hot. They should be allowed to cool off to room temperature before you bite into them. They really will taste better if you wait just a few minutes before eating them. After they've cooled off to room temperature, enjoy these cookies with a glass of milk or wrap them up in an airtight container for longer storage. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing, liking this video, and leaving me a comment. I always enjoy reading comments from my viewers, so I hope you can join me the next time on Adventures in Food with Howard. Bye for now.